So on our picture here, I have an angle marked there with the blue lines. Um, we're talking about this angle right here, this central angle. Remember, a central angle uh, means that the vertex of the angle is the center of the circle, um, and the endpoints are on the circumference of the circle. Okay, that's a central angle. This has a measure of one radian. That's the measure of that angle right there. If the arc right here that is intercepted has the same length as the radius. Okay, so the radius, if we were to curve it and put it there on the outside of the circle, um, then that arc right there, its angle, its central angle, is an angle of one radian. One radian is approximately 57.3 degrees, so I think that kind of helps you visualize. You know about what a 60 degree angle is, um, so you can, um, that helps you know a little bit better the actual size of a radian. Now, um, it doesn't matter how big the circle is, okay? I could make as big of a circle as I wanted or as small of a circle as I wanted. Um, the ratio still exists between the radius and that arc. Uh, so a radian is a, a standard unit of measure, regardless of the size of your circle. Now, an important relationship here, um, if we think about it, if we talk about the entire circle, okay, the entire circle, we know that uh, a whole circle has 360 degrees. Let's think about it in terms of radians. If we go all the way around the circle, um, how do we find the circumference of a circle? The circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. So 2 pi radians is equivalent to 360 degrees or one revolution. Uh, that idea will come up later today or early tomorrow. We'll need to connect that with revolutions. And one complete cycle around the circle. We can simplify that relationship and we can look at half of our circle, 180 degrees, and that's pi radians. We use this relationship right here, that pi radians is 180 degrees. That's what we're actually going to use to convert between the two. Okay. So, let's do some conversions here. How many radians are there in 90 degrees? Um, and I do have a visual representation over there for the more visual amongst us, okay? But 90 degrees, here's how you convert between degrees and radians, okay? I want radians, so I need to put radians on the top of the ratio that I am multiplying by. So pi radians over 180 degrees. It's kind of like most of you have probably had chemistry, right? Remember when you do your conversions? You put the units that you want to get rid of in the opposite location of, of where it is. You're trying to get rid of it, you put it in the opposite location. So we're trying to get rid of degrees, the degrees go in the bottom. Okay, and then we simplify. 90 divided by 180 is 1 half. So we've got uh, 1 half pi radians. Most of the time we don't actually write the word radians. Okay, most of the time you will see that expressed right there as pi over 2. Okay. Um, that's something else uh, It's a very common measurement. Um, you should be familiar that 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. Okay, let's look at one that doesn't simplify quite so neatly. Um, 210 degrees. Again, I'm just going to drop the radians because you, you don't write them, okay? You don't write radians. You need to make sure that you always put the degree symbol, though, because when we're working with these angles, if there's not a degree symbol, the assumption is that's radians, okay? If there's not a degree symbol, the assumption is it's radians, um, but 180 degrees is very different from 180 radians, okay? Um, so you want to simplify the 210 over 180. Now, in my opinion, you should be able to simplify that fairly easy without a calculator, but you may not be able to. So all you have to do, 210 
divided by 180. Go ahead and press math, enter, enter for the fraction because you know it's, it's 210 is not evenly divisible by 180. Okay, that reduces. So that is 7 pi over 6 in radians. Now, if you want to label a picture over here, okay, you know, um, if we start, <clears throat> we'll learn this tomorrow, but um, we start where the red line is, so 90 degrees is kind of at the top of the clock, so to speak, and that's pi over 2. 210 degrees is obviously more than 180 degrees, about 210 right here, so that's 7 pi over 6. I'm doing this so you start to get a sense of where these radians are located. The degrees are pretty easy to locate on circle, but radians uh, can be a little bit trickier. Uh, 345 degrees. Let's convert that to radians. So 345 over 180. Simplify it. That's 23 pi over 12. 345 would be about right here. questions about the calculator or location or anything like that? Okay, so let's go the other way. Let's go from radians to degrees. go from radians to degrees. Now on here I did write out radians every time, um, but you can kind of make the assumption that if pi is involved, it's in radians. If there's no degree symbol, it's in radians. So you don't necessarily need to write radians on your paper for all these examples. Okay, you can just write pi over 3, 11 pi over 6, 3 pi over 4. Okay. So, converting from degrees to radians, we're still using the relationship that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. But in this case, I'm going to flip it over because I want degrees. So degrees is going to go on top, and I'm trying to get rid of radians, so radians is going to be on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. So for the first example, pi over 3, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, one easy way to remember this is you're trying to get rid of the pi. Okay, you're trying to get rid of the pi. So the pi cancels here. I don't want you to multiply it out in, out in your calculator. Pi is in the top. Of the first fraction, it's in the bottom of the second fraction, so those cancel out. All we have is 180 degrees divided by 3, which is 60 degrees. And again, please do not be lazy. Please put that degree symbol. Okay, don't just drop it. Okay, 11 pi over 6. Again, I want degrees, so degrees is going to go on top. The 180 degrees is going to go on top. That means pi goes on the bottom. Again, the pi is going to cancel. Um, I'm going to do this without my calculator, so I'm going to simplify the 180 over 6, and that's 30. So 11 times 30 is 330. Could have done it in your calculator. You just multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. So 11 times 180 divided by 6. 
I change the order because it's easier to divide 180 by 6 than it is to multiply 11 by 180. In your head. Done that on the calculator. Okay. 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. <coughs> In degrees, again, multiplying by 180 over pi, the pi's cancel. I'm just going to go ahead and do this one in the calculator. 3 times 180 divided by 4 gives us 135, 135 degrees. Got one more example here, and then I've got some problems that I'd like for you to do. What if we just have five radians? Okay, five radians. Now, it's not a typo. Okay, I didn't leave out the pi. Um, I did this on purpose. Okay, radians don't always have a pi in them. The majority of the time they do, but they don't always. Um, so this is just five. I want degrees, so degrees goes on top. The pi goes on the bottom, but this time there's no pi to cancel that out. So in this case, this is the one time that we are going to uh, calculate with the pi in there. 5 times 180 divided by, now I don't think any of you are in this habit, but don't use 3.14. Okay, there is actually a pi button on your calculator. Second, and use the caret key right below the uh, clear or the exponent key, however you want to look at it, okay, and you are going to multiply it all out. Okay, so 5 radians is approximately 286.479 degrees. Okay. If I don't specify, I usually round to three places after the decimal. The majority of the time I do specify things. Now, that should kind of make sense, right? Because 2 pi is 360 degrees. Well, if you think about it, pi is about 3.4, so 2 pi should be about 6 something, okay? 6.28 to be more precise. Um, so 5 radians is obviously not going to be 360 degrees, but it's going to be fairly close to that. All right? Okay, so 